FDS 21202, 31302-4142. As long as it is an entrepreneurship course, if you fail any, there is no way you can graduate from the university. This is the Senate decision on this matter. So if your lecturer or your dean or your HOD is telling you something different, tell the person that I am the one saying this with authority because I have the power of the Senate to say this. This has been approved by Senate. And Senate is the supreme power in the university. So there's no way you can graduate from the university. So it's important you take it seriously. Now, the center has made arrangement for you to assist you in this process. So from Monday, you start coming and interact with those people who will guide you in that respect. Those of you that may not be fully prepared now, we expect that you use the period of the break to make proper arrangements and come in as soon as you return from the break, uh, you come to the center, the center will guide you through. We'll give you a window, maybe within two weeks, to present evidence of your business registration so that we can take it. Once you do that, fine. You have fulfilled one third of the requirement for passing just three or two. Right? I think that's, that should be well taken. So please take this announcement very seriously. Now, uh, the second issue has to do with the mentoring, mentoring. Yes, this course is all about mentoring and everything we are talking about. Uh, we have now opened a facility where any of you that have any idea, business idea, anything you are thinking of, but you don't know how to transform it into business, you come, we discuss it, we look for people in that area, especially in the industry, who are very good in that area. We appoint them as your mentor to guide you in translating your idea, or even any business you are currently running, to guide you into how you can transform it into becoming a successful business. Uh, sometimes in November, there's something we used to do every year. We call it Global Entrepreneurship Week. During this period, one of the things we'll do is that all the mentors and their mentees will come and present their work before a large audience of outsiders. Some of them are potential investors and they can pick on your business. So please take it seriously. It's very important. It's not for everybody. If you don't have an idea, fine. But if you have an idea, just come. We'll talk about it and we attach you to the mentor. Is that clear? Very clear, right? Yeah, please take it very seriously. Um, we don't have to waste uh, more time. I think uh, let me just invite the guest lecturer for this session, uh, Mr. Imas Silva, to the podium. But before I but before I before I give you the mic, let me just tell you one or two things about him because it's important you know who he actually is. Mr. Ima Silva is an artist and a businessman. What a wonderful combination. <laughs> to be an artist and a businessman. And on the web page, he wrote that is a is a okay, this is a combination that some people find difficult to understand. But that is who it is, and um, I am glad that it's, it's configured this way. Uh, he's a graduate of biochemistry from the University of Ibadan, and he studied entrepreneurship at the Enterprise Development Center and agribusiness management, both at Lagos Business School. He's also a visiting lecturer at the same institution. He also has a lot of consulting, business consulting experience from EMAS and partners, managers in a of business incubators in different states in Nigeria. And is creating job and business opportunities for many. This, uh, uh, let's all welcome Mr. Ima to the University of Abuja Entrepreneurship Center.
for his uh, presentation. What, what we'll be talking on is uh, what are, what? Okay, entrepreneurial mindset. How to develop your mindset, condition your mindset is to become an entrepreneur. He will talk more about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, for, thank you very much. Our distinguished academics, uh, um, administrators, we truly appreciate you for what you're doing. Um, good to be with you guys. I was here about two weeks ago, uh, last set. It was a wonderful experience. I'm back here, and uh, it's always exciting to be with you guys. Yes, I'm an artist, and I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, I'm a visual artist, uh, but I also learned entrepreneurship like this. And because of that, I could go beyond being a biochemist, beyond being an artist, to also investing in businesses. So I invested in healthcare, and I also invested in agriculture. So myself and our partners run a chain of hospitals, and we also uh, have myself and other partners run an agro park and an agro tourism facility. Uh, I said that not because I want to tell you or boast about myself. It's just to let you know that within you guys is the capacity to do much more than one thing. And if you're ready to actually open your minds and you're actually ready to adopt the kind of mindset it requires, you amaze yourself in the days and the weeks and the months to come. And whatever one has done, some things are simply out of interest, like my art, although it's also a business, but some things like the investment one has made pay my bills. So because they pay my bills, I can afford to pursue my, I can afford to pursue my interest because something is paying my bills. So don't, if you have interests, if you have hobbies that you want to do, maybe that is one of the reasons why you should take this lecture seriously. So that in the years to come, your businesses will pay your bills and you can pursue to do what you like to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Great. So um, if you have any questions, please keep it, to write it down, to keep it till the end, because uh, I want to be able to cover as much as I can, as quickly as I can. Now, I want to be very honest, and I want it to be interactive as well. There will be times when I'll ask, I'll ask you guys to contribute to the conversation. Um, how many of you, let's be honest, don't, you're not even interested in business. Let me see your hand up. So all of you are interested, no, you see, how, I know everybody likes money, but how many of you actually are interested in running a business and making money from it? Oh, sorry, how many of you are not interested? Okay, this is very good because sometimes when you go to give a lecture, half of the people say they don't want to do business, they just want to get a job. As long as they have a good job and they're making their salary from it, they're okay. But if, you already have a set of people that are interested in what it takes to run a business, then it makes my job easier. Secondly, as I was sitting and Prof was talking, you know, I had to tell Prof, I came from a family where my parents are all scientists. And when I told them I want to do business, it was a battle. But they told me that, hmm, just finish, get your degree, go and get your master's, and then you know probably do a PhD or whatever you know get a job and and like, there's nothing wrong with that but then some of us are wired differently some of us are configured differently our parents may do one thing but we have a different configuration and we probably could do well at such things so when Prof was talking I when he came and sat down I said Prof how I wish this is what I just said this this morning now this afternoon. I said, how I wish I had the opportunity to have the, the, the kind of push you guys have. The school is helping you register businesses. They are giving you um, uh, entrepreneurship league where they're going to pick your minds one, one against the other to be able to bring out the best in you. 
they are giving you, they are making this compulsory, so you have a certificate which can take to uh, central bank uh, guided uh, uh, credit schemes where you can even apply for loans. Please, don't let God be angry with you. Take what they're doing seriously. I am one of you. I studied biochemistry. I mean, the people from the medical field on I read medical biochemistry. But here today, I'm talking about entrepreneurship. So we will never know what the future holds. So please pay attention. Okay, so um, can we have the presentation? So our presentation today is called Developing an Entrepreneurial Mindset and Behavioral Traits. Next slide. Now, um, this particular slide is a bit dull. The colors I use, I made a mistake. Uh, I should have used white. Um, entrepreneurship is the readiness and the ability. There are two different things. Somebody may be ready, but doesn't mean he has the ability to develop one, organize two, and run a business enterprise. It's one thing to develop an idea or a concept. I think, you're, uh, Prof, you're going to send them this presentation. Ali. So don't worry about having to write. Take your notes, but you don't have to you know, write down everything. Pay attention. Develop, organize, and run a business enterprise. So it's not only enough to develop an idea. It's not only enough to organize your resources. It also takes something else to be able to run it, meaning on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of people have great ideas. A lot of people... If you come from a background or you have access to resources to make it work, but at the end of the day, do you have the ability to take it through days, weeks, months, and at the end of the day, break even and finally make profits? All these are stages. It's just like a human being. That's why I keep telling people that a business is like a baby. A business is like a baby. You have to nurture it has its Baby, it has his childhood, toddler, it will get to like a teenager, and finally it becomes an adult. It's when it becomes an adult, the business that can start paying your bills. Just like when you guys are adults and you're on your own, you take care of your parents, is it not so? So it takes uh, more than just an idea. Along with any of its uncertainty, in order to make a profit, entrepreneurship involves the creation, extraction, or transfer of economic value. In some businesses, you create value. In some others, you extract value. And in some other cases, you just transfer value. Whatever you do, you must make sure that you are, um, you are a, a career of value and you're taking value from one point to another. In a broader sense, entrepreneurship is the process of transforming the status quo by solving the most pressing problems and pain points in our society, often by introducing an innovative product or service or creating new markets. Now, that last, no, before, please, I want us to go back to that. That last um, sentence is, you are going to solve problems and you're going to address pain points, and that is how you're going to actually make the money. It means that when the majority are running away from problems, you can't afford to run away like that. You have to slow down and ask yourself, is this crisis an opportunity? And entrepreneur, one of the things that he or she knows is that in every crisis, is an opportunity. Right now, cash is difficult to get. Some people are selling cash. Am I right? I'm not saying what is right or wrong now. I'm just trying to tell you how the minds of these boys and girls work. In a situation whereby fuel is scarce, some people are what? Getting fuel and selling black market. Am I right? Okay. We will come to what is ethical and what is not ethical later. But I'm just saying that, okay, this brings to mind, let me just add this because we are having a conversation. One time I was, you know, sometimes we are invited to come and judge entrepreneurship competitions. There was a particular competition, I don't know whether I shared this with the last set. And I was asked to be one of the judges. 
five, there were 10 contestants. Five of them had been to university and got a graduate, got a degree like you guys. The other five did not have any degree. They applied, but they were chosen. But they had been hawking on the streets. They had been selling everything they can sell to survive. The five that came from universities came from the kind of background you and I came from. They had a level of privilege. You cannot be sitting here and not know that you have a level of privilege. Somebody helping you pay your school fees. Somebody's helping you do this and that. And that's why you could sit down here and listen. But those kids, those five, never had that opportunity. So when the competition started and it's, it, you know, it was going on, it became very clear to me as a judge and to the other judges that the five from the universities could not cope with those that came from the streets. Because those from the streets had learned to survive. They had no option than to survive by doing those businesses. While these ones that went to university read, maybe somebody read the one course, another one read another course, they were not getting jobs. But these five, they had already started the journey of entrepreneurship as hawkers. So when I started asking questions, I sold pure water. I, someone said I sell secondhand clothes. Somebody said I sell gala. And the ones that went to university have sparkling nice certificates. And there was one, and then at the end of the day, first and second prices went to those kids that came from the streets. Each of them got then a hundred and fifty thousand and a hundred thousand naira each for their businesses. What am I saying? You're going to leave this place and you're going to meet these people out there. Don't assume that you know very well that maybe 70, 80, 90% of the people that come from universities right now do not have jobs. Am I right? It's not any fault of yours. It's a, a systemic fault. But it was going to take time for these things to change. Not everybody can jump up, right? So we have to find ways and means of surviving, and not just surviving, of excelling and becoming what we really want to be. And guess what? We are in the midst of a crisis, so there must be opportunities for you. So think like those kids that came from the streets that are now competing with those that are even educated and beating them at it and taking advantage of the opportunities. The 150,000 and the 100,000 didn't go to the ones from the universities. So you're privileged to have this opportunity from the school. Give it everything you got, and I'm sure that you will succeed and do very well. So can we go on to the next um, slide, please? So I'm going to talk about, so this is a foundational uh, lecture. It's very foundational. We're going to talk about things that are not just applicable to entrepreneurship, but will be, even if you get a job and you're doing a job, they'll be applicable to you. Because there are entrepreneurs and there are intrapreneurs. There are people within a system. Maybe you're working for Shell or Mobile. Your boss notices that <laughs> I have 10 interns, but this particular one is thinking like a businessman or woman. This one, the way she or he or she is thinking is different. It's all about the mindset. And before you know it, when it comes to some promotion or giving some special package or attention, your name gets mentioned. It's because of those mindsets you have built over these periods of learning. So the right mindset is the foundation on which entrepreneurial success can be built. You have to start thinking like an entrepreneur. What does it take? We started think, talking about already how they look for, how they don't run from problems and challenges. They start to think how, um, how, when uh, everybody is thinking a particular way, they can think differently. Having the right mindset is needful to build the right behavioral traits that will so sustain the success. If you don't have the right mindset, your behavior cannot back, your behavior will fail. If you have the if, if you say you are an entrepreneur, but if you have not built the right mindset, when the challenges come, your behavior will not be able to take you through those challenges. So that's why it's important to know that this is foundational and let me get whatever it takes, take down the particular notes. You know, some people like me, when I was, uh, when I'm listening to certain things, even now, 
It doesn't even matter if one of you is lecturing or saying something is important, I write it down. I will take note of it in my phone. I have a place in my, in my studio. I have a study and a studio together. I, I have things pinned up and I look at them every day so that it will become part of my system. So there will be key things that you hear, learn here that will make sure that you, that you help you to imprint those things in your mind. Okay? Now, look at that uh, white square there. There are three aspects we need to consider. There are the personal characteristics. Then there are the interaction skills that has to do with communication when it comes to you know, that aspect of business. And then the managerial skills. My focus, I'm not here to talk about the managerial side of things or the interaction type of things. I'm here about the personal characteristics, about your personal mindset. That's what we're here. So we are focusing on that first circle. All right? Next slide, please. Now, I have listed maybe about 10 or 12. I can't remember how many. By the time we started you know, doing some work with entrepreneurs, we started asking entrepreneurs, what are the things that made you want to go into entrepreneurship? So different people gave different reasons. One person said, ah, their creativity and innovation doesn't fit the traditional work environment out there. I believe I'm creative, and if I get into the normal workflow out there, I will get frustrated. That is what some people said. Another person said they want a lifestyle that isn't bound to nine to five. They put a price on their time. They are passionate about learning. In other words, they are passionate about learning, trying out new things, practicing what is a new things they can learn, create, and create their own path. Some people, they felt this was an opportunity to try something new, what others have not done before. And how can I create a path for myself? Another one said, the ideas, my ideas are conventional. I, I put the word examples there. You know, somebody like Bill Gates, I'm just using that example, decided that he's going to take, make sure that everybody has a computer that has a kind of a program that will help you do most of the things from your laptop. And today, Microsoft is all over. It is global. Somebody, and you know that he was even kicked out of school at some point. So these are things that make you realize that some people, they, are, they, they have ideas, but they now back it up with action. It's one thing to have an idea and be kicked out of school. If you did not back it with action, you become a big failure. So these are things we are going to discuss. The next one said they want to do things to be remembered. Some people want to be, last week, when, last two weeks when we had the fast, a lot of the people said they want to be remembered, and that's why they want to get into it. Next slide, please. More of the reasons. Somebody said they want to change the world and make a difference. I don't want to just be another person. I worked, I did business, uh, I made money. Uh, I had some houses, I had some cars, uh, I traveled, uh, I had a nice life, I grew fat and I died. No. They, want, they don't want to be the run of the mill, the usual kind of life. They want it to be different. They want it to make a difference. Someone said, grow something from almost nothing. For some people, that, that's, that's something that makes them feel, I will, I will start with nothing. I will show them that I will start with nothing. And by the time I do this, this, and this, this is where I'll be. Somebody said, I don't like being bossed around. Some people don't like being bossed around. That is how they started their business. That's the way they are figured, you know, um, configured. And, and they made a sort of out of it. Some people like taking risks. Say, ah, this one that, you know, just go to work every day, come back, go to work every day, come back. Life is boring, to get boring. Let me do something that, you know, that, that is, that is going to be interesting, that I have to take risks. Some people said they had no other option than to survive. That's why they started their business, like the ones I said in that competition. Five of them didn't go to school. Uh, somebody said they want to retire from actively, actually working to making a living early to achieve financial freedom. And that, that, that last one is one of my driving factors. I've always wanted to do business so that I can, in quote, retire 
early to do what I like doing because my businesses would have come to adulthood. They will pay my bills. I can do I can do what I like doing. So I'm a visual artist. I paint. I take my 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 works abroad. They're sold outside the country. Some are insured at ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. Um, I'm having fun. It's because somebody can actually pay my bills. The baby of the businesses I started became teenagers, became adults. Now I can do what I like doing. So I'm just giving you different examples. So uh, can we move to the next slide? So let's go back to the, uh, you know, these are the ingredients you need to mix to become successful, but we are focusing on the personal characteristics of building the mindset. Next slide. Okay, now these things look very similar, but they are not similar. That is what we are. This is our core of our of our lecture today. These these different characteristics look similar, but they are not similar. By the time you start, you say, "Wow, we thought this was the same thing." No, you will now understand the difference between each one. Okay. Now, um, I think what I should do is uh, let me. Let me take us through this. Before we continue, how many of us have businesses here already? Not just registered a business like school asks you to do. I mean, a big show, I'm not saying a business that is paying big, big money. I'm saying a business that you're actually running and is actually, please raise up your, don't be ashamed. I want to celebrate you guys. Please clap for them. Raise up your hands, John. One, two, three, four. And there are more people in this class. Wow. We have so many people in this, in this class. It's amazing. Please, I celebrate you guys. Not that I don't celebrate others, but I need to acknowledge that. You've taken a step already. I want to encourage you. Now, how many of you here want to start a business this year? Let me see your hands up. Why? Some hands are going like this. Look, why are you afraid? Raise up your hand. Good, good, excellent. All right. So I need five people from those who have started businesses already. I want you to raise up your hand. If you, because I want some volunteers for what you're going to do. If you started your business already and you would like to volunteer for the, for the thing we want to do here, let me see your hand because I'm going to take you through some questions. Okay. One, two, two ladies. I need a gentleman next. A guy, okay, three, uh, another guy, four, okay, and now let's give it to the ladies. One lady who has started a business already, okay, you're the fifth person, okay? One, two, three, four, and five, all right. So those that want to start their businesses this year, let me see your hands up. I want five volunteers. Those who, have, who want to start, okay, I'm starting with a guy. Please clap for the guys, I beg. Uh, one. Then, any other person that wants to start their business this year that wants to volunteer? Another guy, please clap for the boys. Uh, that's another one. A lady, that's three, all right. Number four, another lady. Which lady again? All right, in white there, that's four. The one with the phone, right? Okay. And one more person. There's a guy that he's raised his hands at the beginning. Okay, you're the next person. So mark you guys. So I'm going to start asking you questions. Once we finish this, going through this, I'm going to ask you the questions. Now these are the these are critical things that you need to help you build the mindset. As I said, if you don't have the mindset, the challenges will bring you down. If you don't have the right mindset, at the point you say, I'm tired, I, I can't do it, um, it's, it's okay. Entrepreneurship is, is good, though, but, but we don't want you to get to that place. And we want to build the foundations, solid foundations. It's not this talk, or it's not enough. And some of this you will learn by head knowledge, by listening, 
some of these things, you will have it in your head, but it will become part of you when you go through the process and you actually go through the struggles. It now becomes cemented in your system. So let's go to the next slide, value creation. If you're a business person, if you're an entrepreneur, you are a person of value. That's one thing you must tell yourself. I have to be able to create value to the people that invested money. I have, I have it, me personally, I have two types of investors. I have the investors who are Nigerians inside the country. I have investors who are Nigerians that are outside the country. Now, it is my responsibility to create value for these businesses. Value for customers. They cannot be coming to my business. And my people are not getting, the customers are not getting value. It's just a matter of time. Will my business uh, succeed? No, they will move. They will shift to another person, to another business. And then value to my employees. It's not just to my investors and myself. It's not just for the customers. My employees must feel that I want to work with this man. I want to work with this organization. I want to be able to run. I want to be part of this particular team because it is more than the salary I'm making. I am learning. I'm becoming a better person. I'm learning skills. I'm having, getting knowledge that will help me to stand somewhere else tomorrow and actually be able to do my own. So I am a carrier of value. I'm a distributor of value. I'm a generator of value. That is very critical to you. Next slide. Mindset of value. And to preach about, look at this. This is just, let's take a particular example now. I will take it, an example that is easy to understand. Maybe in agriculture, every business has what is called a value chain. Every sector, let's say, um, let me take a, okay, shoemaking. Or, so where is that lady that used to make bags? Yeah, I saw her today as well. She's smiling and raising her hand. She was here last week too. She makes bags. So let's, let's, let's look at how her industry is, collect, is, is captured in this. Sir, she's here, she's standing there at the back. I saw her. She's the one that gave uh, the bag to the VC. I saw her. So inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales services, every business, including her business, has all this. And value is transferred from what? This, this, is, the, this is the supply end, that corner. This is the demand end. Value goes from this end, continues to be transferred from one section to the other. Look at that. Let's look at it together. Inbound logistics, to make shoes, where are you? Shoe, make, shoe making lady, I'll be back making lady. Do you have a microphone with you? Okay, then in that case, you're going to answer the questions with me. Now, what are the things, what are your raw materials? My materials are leather, uh -huh. spoons, mm -hmm. Um, lining, uh -huh. outer tape and inner tape. Uh -huh. I need adjuster, thread, and I need machine. Excellent. And many other things. Thank you. You can see that all of those come under inbound logistics. All right. Now the next one, operations. Um, our bag designer, she's doing administrative work here. What are, the, what are the things that go on in your, uh, in your hug? Uh, what are the steps to making a bag? Step one, two, three, four. Okay, step one, you get your materials. You get the cost of your materials. And step two, you, at first- Do you draw patterns? Do you draw- Yes, okay. yes, yes. You sketch what you want to do. Okay. Then you at least have an idea of what you want to do. Okay. You know what you want to sell for and the type of bags they want okay. then you show whatsoever you want and then you market your business for them all right so you can see that now after she gets the raw material she now has to put them together draw a design ask the customer is this what you want 
yeah, choose the colors, uh, and then start this process of sewing. She will start with the inner, then she will do the outer, she will bring the two together, do the handles, uh, show the edges, put the buttons. All those things are part of operations. So value that came in as raw materials has now shifted to the next section, which is operations. Then outbound logistics, these things now have to be packaged, right? Am I right? They have to be put in a, in a way that they may need to put together some of these things and then send it to, maybe she has, if she doesn't have them now, she will have suppliers soon. Somebody at uh, Wakalada is selling for her. Somebody at Musi is selling for her. Somebody in another place is selling for her. So all those things are outbound logistics. She has to ensure that there's distribution channels set in place. Then the marketing and sales. She has to ensure that there are people at a point when the thing grows and grows. She can't be the only one marketing. She has to build a team, right? She has to have a marketing team. So value is constantly uh, shifted from one group to the other. It, by the time it leaves the factory, it goes to the distribution centers. The thing that was a raw material is now in music as a bag. And those are retail shops in Rousse, they are the marketing outlets. And then from there, it can even go to other services like exports. So you can see that value started from somewhere and it ends up somewhere. So I just want to let you know that you are going to be generators, extractors, carriers, and transfers of value. Next slide, please. Now, this one is very important to us because the world is going in a direction whereby if you have the wrong kind of wealth, they will checkmate you because human beings are becoming more and more and more knowledgeable about the quality of life they want to live. So if we say, oh, within our own uh, setting, we can cut corners, we can try. But by the time you become an international for international demand, they will give you standards. Am I right? Have you heard of ISO? If you have, if you have heard of ISO, let me see your hand up. ISO standards one, two, three, four, five. That's the international standards organization. This bag she's making right now, if she becomes so good at it and her bags are very creative and uh, and appealing. She is now going to be request, she's now going to be in demand outside the country. But when that happens, they are going to give her a set of regulations to meet. You cannot enter, for example, the US market without meeting certain quality standards. It's different from the one in UK. They will give you their own quality standards. The one in another place will give you their own quality standards. So the one that started like play, like play here will now take on another dimension. Now, an entrepreneur that does not have the understanding that as he begins, he or she begins to move, he or she can make, meet this kind of demand, will not be prepared. He will say, ah, it's enough, I can't kill myself. No. I knew at a point I used to work with uh, the Dana Group, Dana Airlines. Uh, at that time, there was no airlines, there was nothing like that. Um, I was the management training at a point with them. They were into chemicals and pharmaceuticals then. And the lawyer that was working, she was a Nigerian, brilliant lady. At the point, she resigned. And I asked her, what are you going to go and do? She said, hey, Mal, I've already started my business years ago while I was doing this lawyer matter here. She exports right, uh, beans. We rule all the local condiments to the US, UK, all over the world. That day she opened my eyes and said, Yeah? She said, Come and see. See the standards for UK. See the standards for US. See the standards for this place. See this, see this, see this, see this. A hey, lawyer. So, my prof has said, The fact that you're getting a, a degree here does not mean that you cannot have started something much earlier. Build it to a point where she can say, I can leave this job in this kind of a company. Because my business is already paying my bills. Just after she left, maybe a few months later, I met her. By that time, she said, I have even asked my husband to resign. Both of them have resigned. 
the husband has gone to the UK or she has gone to the US and they were now making sure that all the things were logistics across the different countries because they started early. Now, I'm coming to something here. It is important to have the right mindset towards riches and wealth as an entrepreneur. True wealth is not what you gain by depriving other people or cutting corners. You know you can make money by cutting corners or depriving people. You can do guru guru, Abi. Am I right? We can try that. But you want to go big? Can Microsoft try guru guru? Can they say this program, if it works, okay. If it doesn't work, eh? Even, you know the competition with Samsung, between Samsung, Apple, you just small this thing. Before you know it, all your phones are useless. They have brought in another thing. And you can imagine how much value this phone, when we were students in the university, I had the wristwatch. It's different from diary. It's different from... Uh, now everything is inside this computer, email. Before I would go to cyber cafe, spend the night to send email. When we were young, everything is here. Isn't that value? Isn't that value packaged? This is value. And is it by cutting corners? No. So true wealth is not gained. So don't get it. If, if you say your friend is doing guru guru and is making money, if you follow that path, there's no guarantee. In fact, I can guarantee you that there's no guarantee that you will succeed because he or she is operating within a small sphere of influence. You cannot go the big game by cutting corners. True wealth is what you gain by creating value for others. So the lady that is making bags, she should go back and think again. Ah, okay, look at my bags. This is my bag. These are the ones I see in the market. How can my own be different? Can it be cheaper with better materials? If that is the case, how do I source some materials at a cheaper price and still give good quality and better quality so I can now become even stronger in the market? All that takes having the right mindset. If you don't have the right mindset, you will cut corners, you will go thus far and no more. Next slide, please. Self-confidence. So let's go to the others now. Self-confidence is different from self-efficacy and all those. So let us, I need you to pay attention at this point because these things sound very similar, but they're different. Self-confidence is an attitude about your skills and abilities. It's an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attitude about yourself. It means I can, I can do it attitude. I, I, I know that I have it in me. Thank you. I have it in me. Yes, I have it in me. That's the attitude we're talking about. It means you accept and trust yourself and have a sense of... I think maybe you should keep it... It means you accept and trust yourself and have a sense of control in your life, knowing your strengths and weaknesses well. How many of you know, how many of you don't know your weaknesses? Ah, thank God. Because sometimes I do interview for people, they say, I ask them, do you have any weaknesses? They say, we don't have any weaknesses. That's the beginning of the problem for me. That means you're perfect. Me, I'm not perfect. So how will I work with a perfect person? I'm supposed to pay salary to a perfect person. Something is wrong. So you, need, you should also know your strengths and you should also know your weaknesses. Don't let your weaknesses drain you down, but don't let your strengths make you feel that there's not like you because you'll be shocked what could happen down the road. You set realistic expectations and goals. Communicate assertively and can handle criticism. You set realistic expectations. Don't say, ah, in fact, I'm so creative. Like tomorrow, tomorrow, I want to start a new platform. We will do this, this, that. And you know that this thing you want to do, it's just like, you know, it's not possible. That's not self confidence. That's not realistic. Realistic is the one that knows where I really am and what I can do at this. So you should know how to break your journey stage by stage, face by face in, in your entrepreneurship. You know, at this point in time, this is what I can take. 
These are the realistic expectations for these six months, for these three months, for this one year. And can handle criticism. If they criticize you and you get angry, if they, let's be honest, is there anybody here that when they criticize you, you get angry? Let's see your hand up. Let's be honest. Thank you. I see hands up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, it's beginning. It's, I mean, I was also like that, but I've had to change. When people create, because you can't be a businessman or woman, you're offering a service and the customer abuses you. You get angry, say, oh, if you like, buy. If you don't like, get out. How many people will you do that to? So you should be able to handle criticism. When criticism comes, you ask yourself, Okay, you say thank you very much for this. I will look into the matter. Now, even if the person is wrong, that is the way you answer the person. Or you explain that, okay, this is the reason why we do the things we do this way. You know, uh, but if you think, let's see how we can make adjustments. You want to win them over because you are a carrier of value. You are an ambassador of value. This self-confidence is not task specific. It's self-appraisal independent of goals. Who am I? It's about how, who am I, how I feel about myself. It's not about particular tasks. It's important. Some people feel, ah, I can't talk to customers. I'm not good at marketing. Therefore, I will not become a businessman. That is task specific. That is something you can learn. It may take you time. You can learn. And in future, if you have money, you can give somebody else to do that job for you. It doesn't mean you cannot be an entrepreneur. Do you understand? That's why I said it is not task specific. Having self-confidence is not task specific. Next slide. Self-efficacy is different from self-confidence. Self-efficacy refers to an individual's belief in in his or her capacity to execute behaviors necessary to produce specific performance attainments, like that marketing I talked about. Now, you may have to have self-efficacy in marketing. Some people, their problem is numbers, accounting, keeping count of money. If you are in one of those categories, let me see your hand. You don't know when it comes to keeping record of money. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. God is watching you. We will help you. Eh? If you have a problem keeping record of money, raise up your hand. I was also like that. And I thank God that I could afford good accountants. I said, please come and take this over from me. So what I do is that I give this accountant this job. I get another accountant to check this accountant. I get another accountant to check both of them. <laughs> so that everybody's behaving themselves. We're all happy. We're all making our money and we're going our way. Okay? So self-efficacy relates to specific performance attainments. So you now know that there are things you may not be good at, but you need to pick up those things. Do you understand? There's nothing wrong in not being able to do some things. That's what I want to emphasize. Let your mind be at rest. You guys are going to be great. OK? Task-specific, context-sensitive in reference to some type of goal. The question is, can I do this particular thing or that particular thing? And if not, then what can I do to address that issue? Next slide. Resilience. Hmm. The capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties, toughness. is one thing to start. You started the business you have started making gains and all of a sudden Bahala breaks out. No raw material in the market. Our bag designer, bag designer, hello, what will happen if the raw material is not available? Are you going to stop your business? If your normal place, normal supply says there's no raw material, are you going to stop? No. What will you do? I'm going to I'm going to compile all those that want material, those that want bags. Then I'll give them specific time when it will be available. Okay. So I won't chase my customers away. Thank you. Is it also possible that you can still look for other suppliers apart from the one that is usually supplying to you, right? 
So that is resilience. Do not let the problem take you down. Do we understand? That problem, you not, that problem should not take you down. It's the capacity to withstand or recover or to recover quickly from difficulties. It is toughness. Resilience is the process and outcome of successfully learning and adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences, especially through mental, emotional, and behavioral flexibility. An adjustment to external and internal was I can tell you the number of times when we had challenges in, in these different businesses, I will come home, I will be down. I will sit down, I will just hold my head in my hand, say, ha, ah, how are we going to surmount this thing? But then there's no the time where when we once somebody is going, we'll be waiting for somebody to come and say sorry, or oh, yeah, get up. Ah, hey. You have to, there's a time for it, but then you're going to outgrow it. And then you're going to encourage yourself. Tell yourself that, ah, no, 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 no. I'm going to stop. See, there must be a way. There must be a way. Even if it's not in my head now, there must be a way. Let me just go and take one, one cold glass of water, eat some granola, not go and sleep. Wake up. And after I wake up again, Start thinking, what can one do? If the thing is asked me, and I say, okay, let me go and look for somebody who is more experienced in this, my field, and ask them, bros, what did you do when you faced this kind of situation? Do we understand? I'm just giving you examples. Next slide. Entrepreneurial creativity. Now, is, imagine your father and mother gave you 200,000 to start your business. You got your small shop where you want to be doing printing and photocopying. You started the business, you're moving on. But you don't want to use your brain for anything. The only is everybody be working on. Maybe I got uh, somebody to be doing uh, attendance there. Okay. You, you, you use your brain. Me, I can't afford to use my, my brain. It's for music and for watching movies. What will happen? Before you know it, somebody else will start their own printing shop. And another person will start. Before you know it, those ones say that if you come to a shop while you're working, you get free Wi-Fi, you get a free bottle of Coke. If you are going to spend two hours here, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, all your customers have left. You have not been using your creativity. It is not static. It's not stagnant. It is not stagnant. You must be constantly creative, constantly thinking ways of improving. What are we? We are ambassadors of value. Because we are ambassadors of value, we cannot stop thinking, how can I tweak it this way? How can I do it that way? The one that is doing back there, the back designer, she has to constantly find ways. She has to go online and check her different designs. So when this customer has bought this one before, he said, ah, madam, this is six months old. Are you sure you don't need another bag? Come and see something I just designed now. Constantly being creative. Entrepreneurial creativity is the ability to develop new ideas and solutions to problems. It is the ability to see into the future and generate ideas, solutions, innovations before they are needed. Sometimes, you know, they say boys will understand this better in football. The best scorers are not the people. When we were growing up, we told the best scorers were people that would dribble one, two, three, four, or five people and score goals. It happened in the time of Pele, but you can't try it now. Because the game has developed. You cannot say you want to develop, uh, you want to dribble seven people and score. The defenders are much better. So the best strikers now are there, people that know where the ball is going. They know where the ball is coming to. They know how to, people like Ronaldo, it's not that they're fantastic. They will just position themselves, one, two taps, one, two dribbles, and they score. On Mbappe, they, they just pick the ball and score. Somebody else did the work, and, but they know where to go and stand, where to position themselves. So as a businessman or woman, you also need to start thinking. If you cannot see it here, for example, I'm wearing this uh, kaftan. Now imagine tomorrow, somebody said this man, he likes kaftan that has uh, one, one something here. Or there's a new design somewhere. 
if I wear this today, tomorrow you come and tell you, Mr. Silva, why don't you not want to get something like this? You are already pushing me to the future and saying, I can bring this future to you. This is what is in vogue in so, so, so place. I mean, when you say, let me try it. So not just being creative, but also going into the future to bring what people would want. It is the ability to solve your customers or clients' problems before they even realize the problem exists. You can see the different dimensions. Bill Gates, he knew that sooner or later, there's going to be a problem. So he started saying, what will people need? So they won't need to leave the house. Zoom that we use. Zoom started long before COVID. Nobody knew Zoom. I had used Zoom about two years before that I was abusing which kind of uh, app is this that's chopping all my, all my data and all my, the energy of my phone. But when COVID hit, Zoom became the, 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 they broke the ceiling in the income because they had perceived that something was going to happen. And if it does happen, they are in line to benefits. Next slide. Risk propensity. Some of you don't like to take a risk, especially the girls. Am I right? But last time when I was here, the girls proved me wrong. They actually, by the time we tested the girls, they, they were really tough. They showed us that they can't take risks. It takes, an entrepreneur has to have a level of appetite for risk. Am I right? You cannot say you are taking five million from the bank to go and do a venture. And the bank has said, if you do not pay, this is what will happen. It takes risk. It's a risk, isn't it also? So the higher the risk, the higher the benefit. The person that, let me just ask a question. The person that built ShopRite at uh, Lubin, that took the risk of building that ShopRite, he took billions of naira in loan to do that. You, you took 200,000 to build the uh, photocopy center. Who took more risk? ShopRite, I mean, the people that built ShopRite. But the income that ShopRite is making, is it the same income as you? But can you grow into big time overnight? No. But can you start chopping risk small, small? Yes. Don't be afraid to chop risk small, small. Say, ah, for, the, for what I can do now is I can be selling uh, perfume. Let me just do that small one for now. Or I can do this. I can be selling shoes. Or I can be selling bags. Start with that. I started by selling, what was that? I have sold everything under the sun in UI. Today, I will sell Q-Tex for ladies for their nails, different colors. Tomorrow, I will sell them the one to remove the Q-Tex. Q-Tex remover. Day after, if I hear somebody need fish, I'm going to look for fish. If I'm passing one department and they're renovating, I say, ah, okay. I used to supply paint to. You say, you supply paint. I say, ah, I get you paint. Which color do you need? I don't know where the paint is coming from. If the uh, admin secretary says, oh, yeah, go and look for paint, let me know the cost. I said, don't worry, by the day after I will get you. I will rush to the market, start going to find out who is selling paint to, how much is the paint. This cost, get different brands, get the prices. Say, I want to be fine buying as a wholesaler, I want to resell. How much will you give me on commission? When I came from a single parent home, it was very tough for my mom. So because of that, I had to survive. So I'm one of those people that at least survival is one for me. To listen, even my lecturer said, ah, This man, you always sell the up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. No, I'm not selling, I'm doing what I like doing. But there's a time for everything under the sun. And when there's that time, do what you have to do so that you can have the kind of life you want to get in the future. Okay, so risk taking propensity can be defined as a person's orientation to take risks. Risk taking propensity, which is an element of the personality of the entrepreneurs, is considered to be critical for the decision to enter the entrepreneurship career. Next slide. I think we have almost. Next slide. Entrepreneurial leadership. This is the last of what I'm supposed to do. Now, there is no business that you say you want to do that is you are the only person in that business. You can start like the lady that is selling bag or the one that wants to sell shoes. You can start with you being the only one at the beginning. But as the business grows, 
Can you be the only one? Are you Superman? No. Or Superwoman? No. So you have to now start building teams. And when you start building teams, it is critical that you also have the ability to lead teams. If you're somebody that is too harsh on other people, especially people that are going to work for you, you're going to have to start working on yourself now. You have to know how to win people over and get them to do the work. If you're somebody that is the other opposite, you're too lethargic, you could care less, they can do anything they like. It's just a matter of time, they ruin your company. So, entrepreneurial leadership is a mindset that focuses organizations on turning problems into opportunities and create economic value. So, it is not only you that is a problem solver, you have to make all of them problem solvers. You have to make all of them value ambassadors. You have to make all of them people that are just, you have to reproduce yourself in all of them. Such leadership aims to cultivate entrepreneurial individuals and teams that fully leverage their creative potential in creating value for an organization. So, uh, please let me check the, I think I've come to the end of this slide. I want to now do the practical work. Yes, I'm not going to go into interaction skills and managerial skills. Let's leave that. So, um, uh, please let's go to the list of um, reasons why some people decided to join to get into entrepreneurship. Now, please, who has the microphone? The lady with the uh, hair. I see you're busy there. Can stop. Do you need help? You can do it. Okay. So we will start with the people that want to start a business. The people, the five people that said they want to start a business. Can you raise your hand so she can see you? The five people said, I said they would like to start a business. Where are you? Are you one of them? Okay, that's one. Where are the others so she, she can cite you? Okay, that's the other gentleman here. Okay, two. There's another guy there at the back, right at the back. Yes, and there are two ladies. Okay, see the one lady here and one other person. I'm gonna take you through, it will help you. Which other lady? One more lady, 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 lady. A lady that wants to start a business. Did we offend you? You are tired. Or any guys that want to start a business, apart from the ladies. Okay, there's a lady there. Are you not a lady? Or am I, is, it, is it halo like uh, Jesus said? Uh, okay, it's a uh, scarf, sorry. All right, so you have them. So let's start with you. Now, out of these things, which ones are your own motivation to start the business you want to start? Uh, the first thing, my name is uh, Marco D.Z. Joseph, biology education trainer. The first thing there is uh, number three, sir. Number three? Yes, sir about learning, trying out and practicing what new things and creating their own path. Wow, okay. Any other one? Can you shift to the next slide? Any other one here? Yes, number seven. See how quickly he said number seven. Grow something from almost nothing. See the different motivations, so they will not be the same, just watch. Any other one? Not really, sir. You are sure? Um, number nine. Number nine. You like taking risks. Okay. Is that all? All right. Thank you. So please clap for him. Thank you. Now, the next person that wants to be an entrepreneur is over here. After we listen to the people that want to be entrepreneurs, we will now listen to the people that are already entrepreneurs and compare and contrast. Please introduce yourself, your okay. department. My name is Abu Bakar Nuruddin Ali okay. from the Department of Economics. Uh, the next slide, please. Oh, nothing here. Yeah. 
Right, that's number six. Number six, you want to change the world and make a difference. Wow. Please clap for him. That is his primary first motive. Wow, that is fantastic. Okay, and any other one? Yeah, and me number nine. You like taking risks. Yeah. Everything about risks. About risks, I think. Yes. Okay, so can I ask you a further question because of what you chose? What is the idea you have in doing? Okay. Um, well, I'm thinking I want to make differences in the, like, the area of agriculture because mm -hmm. the mindset of like majority of the people are the same when it comes to agriculture. So I want to make a difference and make it look like um, there is a more innovative and creative way to, to do a present it here to do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well done. My Instagram handle is at the end of this. Link me up on Instagram. I would link you up with the agro park where we have. You can visit the place and take a look at some innovation we are trying to do. Okay, so, uh, thank you. okay, so um, yes, number three. Who is the third person? I see some people do like this. Why? Where are the others? So, okay, the lady here. Hello. Mm, I'm yeah. Sophia Kaima, okay. Department of Animal Science. Okay. So I think number three. You're passionate about learning, trying out, and practicing new things and create your own path. Okay. Yeah. Next, the next set of slides. And also number eight. You like taking risks, huh? Girls, no, yeah. Eight. You don't like being bossed around. You ask, the lady will say yes. Ah. Eh? Okay, oh. wonderful. Any other one? And also number nine. You like taking risks. Please clap for her too. <laughs> Girls are proving us wrong nowadays, so they can take risks. Good. Um, now the people at the back, I think we have two people at the back, the guy and the lady. Number four. Good morning. My name is Maria. My name is Maria from the Department of Guidance and Counseling. Um, I'm going with number one. Creativity and innovation doesn't fit into the traditional work environment. So you want to start thinking of what you should do now before you find yourself there and being frustrated. I mean, very good. Any other one? The other, other slide, this slide, this slide. Nine. Number nine. <laughs> hey, more ladies taking risks to, ah, she likes taking risks to any other. Number eight. You don't like it most around. <laughs> All right. So uh, the last person. There's one guy who raised his hands from from it from the beginning of time. Uh -huh. That's you. My name is Sam. Um, I'll be two, five, and eleven. Two, five, and eleven. Number two. He wants a lifestyle that isn't bound nine to five. He considers his time very valuable. So you're right, you're thinking right now. Yes, sir. What, are, what course are you doing? Environmental education. Okay. Number two, number five. five. You want to do something to be remembered. You want it to be, you want to have a legacy. And yes, they sir. say, okay, this is the person that did this particular thing. Not that when you die, they will just bury you and everybody forgets you. All right. Which other thing? Eleven. Ah, welcome to my group. <laughs> we are you and I, we are in the same club. Eh? Yes, sir. Well, me, I want to retire early. I do like what I like doing. 
So that is that was my own thing. Okay. Have we finished all five? All right. Can we go to the people that already have businesses quickly so that we don't waste time? Business owners, please, 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 please. Raise up your hand. Business owners, there's one here. There's one there. There's one here. Business owners. You can see how diverse our motivations are. How diverse our motivations are. We are all different. We are all differently configured. So if you decide to create your own path, this is the time to start now. And there's no better place than this university. Um, where is the microphone? Who has the microphone? Okay, all right. Introduce yourself quickly at the course. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Malad and Habib from Course Science Department. So I pick number three, number 10, and number six. Number three is passionate about learning, trying out and practicing new things and creating his own path. The number what again? Sorry. Nine. Number nine. And Take I it. have reason for that because I'm a fashion designer. In the stage of learning, you have some things where, whereby when you are with your boss, they will ask you, can you do this, can you do that? And if you cannot take the list, you'll be scared that, ha, ah, if I do this, how am I going to succeed in it? So I will take the list and say, yes, I can do it. Then I will find some people around me, help me with it, then I will succeed in it. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you for that example. So only two reasons or three reasons. Okay, all right. Uh, next person. <laughs> you say <"Not> me. <laughs> you. My name is Faye Kemi from Geography Department. And then what business have you started? I'm a fashion designer. So I'll pick number three. Number, number three. three. Passionate about learning, trying and practicing new things, creating your own path, yes. And Number eight, number nine. Number eight, you don't like to be bossed around and you like taking risks. If you notice now, from all these people speaking, some things are becoming more and more common. Am I right? You can see that there are patterns, yet they are not all the same. Thank you so much. Next person. Good afternoon, everyone. My yeah. name is Ali Josiah Okechi from the Department of Economics. So what business are you doing? I'm a male fashion designer. Hey, I think I should move, I should move my, my, my choice to this place. There are so many fashion designers here. Okay. Okay, for the first slide, I pick number two. You want a lifestyle that is not bound to nine to five, okay? Yes. My reason for saying that is that I have, a, I have brothers that uh, they are all in, um, Working in working, working, they're in the working class and they leave as early as seven in the morning, coming back five, and that's the routine for every day, except when the, there is public holidays and all of that. And I, I get to see their complaints and all of that, even though the pay is pretty okay, but then the complaint is, is, is too much. So I want to I want to shift from that kind of um, lifestyle. Then for the second slide, I'm picking number 11. Number 11. <laughs> Welcome. We are together in this one. We want to have financial freedom so that we can do what we like doing. Thank you. Okay. Who is next? This lady has been doing like this and doing like this and. <laughs> Three fashion designers. Good day. My name is Sharon Waka Amarachi and for political science department. I own a laundry and cleaning service. Wow. So I'll be going with number two, three, and eleven. Two is doesn't like nine to five. Yes. 
wants to create her own path because she wants to try new things and eleven welcome to the club thank you yes <laughs> okay and um Just to support entrepreneurs. Uh, did you hear what I said before? Okay, I said that I also run a network of business groups across the country on WhatsApp. They're just basically informal incubators for businesses. So we have state groups, we have sector groups. State means state to state. We have sector means property, healthcare, agriculture, uh, arts and culture, different different groups. So you can join. You can you can join two two states and two sector groups, and you can market your products and services. And you can also ask in case you need assistance. Please, is there somebody here who can help me with this, this, and that? Because there are businessmen and women that just basically support your businesses. So I will uh, read out the number of the admin uh, that runs the group for me so that you can contact her and let her know you would like to join the group. Um, then I will also, at the end of the day, I will also let you know my Instagram handle so you can keep in touch because I share things on Instagram. All right, so um, we'll, let's now get to the, the list of uh, hello technical department, the first the characteristics. No, further down. Down. That, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so now the people that want to start businesses that have already answered, uh, told us before, held the microphones and said, please, which of them is your area of things that you know you have to improve on? Just tell us three things that you know you have to improve so that it makes us know that these are the areas you're going to work on and you're actually being accountable in front of everybody that you're going to work on these areas. So um, if you spoke before, hello, our bank manufacturer, Please, let's go back to the first set of people that want to start businesses, the same people. Microphone, sorry, give them the microphone. Let them tell you where their problem area is and that they're going to work on that. It's, it's, it's an act of accountability. The list of, you know the list? The list of personal traits that you have. Have you 
remember the list? Yes, I have them here. The first one is um, self-confidence. Something you need to work on. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Then uh, secondly is a uh, leadership aspect. That is now handling a team. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. So you can see that uh, these are things that they've already started to identify as they're listening. These are the areas that if you are if you're dozing off now, some of these people they're already taking note of these things and at the beginning, you can see I didn't even put out the list. He already has the list there, he has already told you the things he needs to work on. All right, so next person in that set of people. Uh, my is uh, entrepreneurial uh, activity. Entrepreneurial activity, activity. Yeah. ideas. Yes. You need to you need to work on more and more ideas. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next person. Next person that spoke before that want to start businesses. Please raise up your hand. So she's here. There. She's here. Raise up your hand now. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Leadership. Leadership, okay. Handling teams. Abi, who's up? Quickly, quickly. You can see different people have different areas of needs. It's not the same. So you you should ask yourself, what are my own areas of? What do I need to work on? Resilience. Resilience. Yes. That one, when they punch you and you fall down, you have to know how to get up again. All right. It can be more than one or the last person here. Yeah? Risk, propensity, and resilience. Risk, propensity, and resilience. So not everybody has the same risk propensity. So some people realize that that is one thing they need to work on. Okay. So let's go to the business people that already have businesses and let them tell us the areas they need to work on. Is done so that we see we are all real. We are human beings. We are not super human beings. Tomorrow, when they hear their story and they are doing well, you know that <laughs> from amongst us now. Yes. The first one is value creation because this is one of the things that can make you the distinct among the people that have started the business that have been doing it before. Then the second one is risk propensity in the sense that, as I said earlier, I'm a fashion designer. You cannot limit yourself to physical customers. It says that you have to get customers online and everywhere. So when they start, like, I want to see a particular clothes, you have to take the list that, ah, how will I get the measurements of those people? So you can take that list and say, okay, let me take it and work on it. And in which I've tried it and it works for me very well and perfect. Thank you for your contribution. Well done. Yes, for the others, yeah. People that already have started their businesses. My first one is a value creation. Yeah, it's very, very important. I need to work on my value content and be able to expand more on that. And secondly is my resilience. I need Thank to you. work on that. Thank you. Well done. Well done. So resilience. Ah, no, well, resilience is... Uh, resounding over and over again. You can see that it's difficult, it's challenging for them. That's why resilience is coming up more and more. Because they are the ones actually doing something and facing the challenges. So when they face the challenges, they're like, hi. It's not easy, but they know that they have to go on. I think one, one or two, one more person. Have we covered everyone? I see uh, the two people at the back. They are from political science, political scientists. Um, the first one is risk propensity. Why I say that is because initially when I started, there were other people that were into that, and then I needed to take it out, like to make other people know. So I had to do free jobs, like free cleaning, free laundry for some people, and then I was recommended. So that was a risk because I wasn't getting anything, but I was making myself known. And then also resilience. Thank you. Good example. Good example. 
Our mind is a um, right perception of wealth, vision, um, some motivation, and the last one is risk for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your contributions. It has been a wonderful, wonderful time being with you guys. Um, can we shift to the last slide so they can see the Instagram handle so we can keep in touch? Um, okay, there's a scan code there, but I don't know if everybody can scan it and get my details. Otherwise, my Instagram handle is at Silver Imam, S I L V A I M A L, at Silver Imam, at S I L V A I M A L, it's one word. And I will give you the number of the idea that prompts the. I didn't do this for the last set, I forgot to ask Prof. Uh, but even I told him, he said that I should go ahead. So, um, so if you want to join the business network, uh, this is the number. If the person asks you, how did you get to know about the groups? Say that Mr. Silva gave a lecture at the University of Abuja today, and you're one of the students at the lecture. So she knows that you're an authentic person, all right? Um, 0816. They will take you to the terms and conditions. It's free, but no political clause, no abusive clause, no tribal clause. Once you say yes, I agree, that'd be 0816249. 4283. Her name is Gift. 0816249-4283. It has a combination of people that own businesses, people that some of them, few of them are investors, and some of them that are working in the businesses. But they're just basically business communities encouraging one another uh, uh, to be able to you know continue to stay on this our journey. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. If you have any questions, I'm going to answer. If you have any questions, please feel to ask. You have a question? Yeah. Please let's give Mr. Ima another brief time. This is what we call practical mentoring, right? You know, some of the things he has expressed in the hall today is about mentoring, right? I was so impressed when he was giving you some, some of your contacts to meet him after the lecture for further. That's the kind of thing we are looking for. And these are the kind of people we want you to meet. They are examples of successes in business and they can guide you how to navigate the business environment. Thank you so much, Mr. Emma, for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, I think we have, uh, we have come to the end of uh, to this session, right? Uh, I think there's just uh, a small presentation that we, that we would like you to uh,